Mary Jane here, and Joe is absent. So we want to have a chance to look at the <coughs> minutes from the March meeting, the special meeting, if so, we need a motion. I'll make a motion to accept March meeting. Second. Special meeting. Second. Roll call, please. Neil? Yes. Ralph? Yes. Bill? Yes. Kathy? Yes. Mary Jane? Yes. Everyone have a chance to look at the payroll time sheets? If so, we need a motion to accept. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Mary Jane? Yes. Kathy? Yes. Bill? Yes. Ralph? Yes. Neil? Yes. <clears throat> we need a motion to approve the transfer of police revenue to the payroll fund to the police fund. I move that the transfer be made. Second. Roll call, please. Ralph? Yes. Neil? Yes. Kathy? Yes. Mary Jane? Yes. Bill? Yes. I need a motion to approve the police fund monthly operating fund transfer. So moved. Is everybody asleep? Second. <laughs> Second. Roll call, please. Neil? Yes. Bill? Ralph? Yes. Mary Jane? Yes. Kathy? Yes. I need a motion to approve the interest transfer, please. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I move that it be all interesting to the appropriate funds. Second. Ah! Yes. Neil? Yes. Ralph? Yes. Kathy? Yes. Bill? Yes. Mary Jane? Yes. And with that, Susan, you're up.
public hearing for the South or the Cherry Street Phase 2 today, and I appreciate Rick being there. Um, I think the sad part about it is that the county is only going to have $84,000 to pass out. That, that amount just keeps getting smaller and smaller. They're getting $99,000. They keep $15,000 for administration, which they keep the same amount for administration even when they were getting one hundred and twenty. <laughs> But, um, you know, I feel like there's a certain process that Kim has to do with him, and that doesn't really change no matter how much money you get. So, um, I, they're probably going to be lucky to fund two projects. And then, you know, they're also looking at with the competitive set aside of the neighborhood revitalization, the downtown, and the critical infrastructure. You know, those applications, as you well know from your experience, they get extra points if there's formula money in them. So I kind of see that they're probably going to probably lean towards that. I don't think we have a shot. I don't think we have a shot. And you're lucky you don't have a shot. Yeah. Is that where they're going to so, be keeping the money for the, the uh, infrastructure right down at the uh, fairgrounds? No, it's nothing to do with that. Is that a lot of those burn grass? There was a bunch of the day. Yeah. I just don't think we got a shot at it. On the 84,000, we have to get away. Okay. Townships is there looking for callers. There's a whole list of stuff today. I'll be honest with you, I don't think. I mean, we've been really lucky. I don't think we got a shot at it at all. But, you know, yeah, you're not going to get it. You're not going to get it. I see it today, so. I, I can simply agree with you there. Yeah. That money that you're talking about came from a capital budget yeah. thing that was passed, and that there's money going all over the state of Ohio. It's like it's a pork, it's a pork thing, really. Yeah. You know, people wanted money and they found money in the budget for whatever reason. The money they took away from you as a community is <coughs> in there. Yep. Now that they're giving to everybody. So anyway, that's that. Um, the other thing, um, we probably need to start thinking about Ohio Public Works Commission. I know it seems like it's only April, but July will be here around the corner. You really you only really have three meetings till then. Um, the applications I believe will be due either the end of July or the very first of August. You may not have a meeting before the August uh, deadline. Um, so you really need to be thinking about where we want to go with that because we don't really have anything in the pipeline. Um, I don't know if we want to think about East Cherry Street or if there's something else that you guys have in mind. Um, remember, ADT is a big thing. Um, you know, we've always kind of concentrated on the state routes because we've got that ADT thing going on. Um, so we probably really need to start thinking about that so that we can put some numbers together for projects so that you have some things to think about and numbers to think about more importantly. Um, so you can look at your budget. Um, we will be submitting applications for 2018. So as far as your budgeting, you know, you've got a little bit of time there to think about that. And obviously, as you know, we submit that application into the three-year pipeline, so the next year we basically resubmit the same thing or you can change it. And then the third year is when you, if you really want to make any changes, that's really the time to put the work into it um, to kind of get it to where you want it to be if you want to make some changes. You can't make changes along the way. You can't change your location of your projects, but you can add to it, reduce it, put other sources of funds in and then the other thing I have is um, some dates for you to meet about the U.S. Route 40. If you want to meet during the day, I can do it anytime next week on the 16th, 17th, or 18th. Which is Wednesday or Friday, or I can do anything this week.
the way, depending on how the perjury thing comes into play, you know, will depend on whether or not we have to submit that then through a high school works commission and then they get part of their money that way and then you want to submit it to the legislative first. So keep that in mind. Okay. Okay. All right, thank you, Susan, right. for all your help. You're very welcome. I'm sorry I didn't have better news about the CBG. <laughs> it's just it's getting to the point they really are putting all the money into that yeah. set aside. So I guess that's where it's going. I guess we may not be thinking that way. Yep. So thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. And feel free, you've had a long day. So. If you don't, yeah, I have another meeting with you. That's fine. Nobody else here. I'm going to go to another meeting. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. See ya. Follow me and I'll see you next week. Okay. Second or questions? Second. Roll call, 
this? Discussing as number one, if everyone had a chance to read the uh, handbook that Kathy's passed out. The changes. But you've got it's not the whole thing. These are just changes these, and changes. things that were condensed and put together where they've been added along through the year and now it's just in the proper place. So this is the changes to be added to our current handbook, correct? Yes. Well, yes. An amendment for a bill? Well, actually, it's it doesn't make any difference. It's it an ordinance. The ordinance adopts this yep. handbook. Okay. With all the changes. All right. Ordinance 2014-02. An ordinance to establish an employee's handbook and personnel policies for all employees of the village and board of trustees of public affair in Paris, Ohio, Preble County. Whereas the village of New Paris has an obligation to File a set of rules, regulations, and general outline of the policies made regarding its employees. And whereas this complaint, Phillips, oh, say that word for me, please. Well, I don't have the oh, thing. <laughs> 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 this is compilation. Compilation. Thank you. Guys. Oh, yeah, okay. I'm sorry. Compilation shall be held to be a handbook for all village and board employees and all supervisors of said employees, be it therefore ordained that the village hereby adopts the attached employees handbook and personnel policy. Said handbook shall supersede any and all ordinances, handbooks, or policies previously enacted, and be it further ordained that the accompanying handbook and policies are not deemed to create a vast contractual right to any employee and may not be interpreted as a promise of special treatment and be it further ordained that the village reserves the right to repeal, modify, or amend these policies at any time with or without notice and said policies do not limit the power of the mayor and the council to do so.
Chief, did you have any response back from CJ on this from morning? I have not. No, or the chamber either one. Either Before you do that, Rick, I want to read this letter from the Brook County Recorder. Oh, okay. Okay. We got a letter from the Brook County Recorder informing us that the way we uh, vacate an alley or make a change on the street or anything else, the rules have changed. And from now on, this is the way it's going to have to be. This letter is to form you of a change in the law that went into effect on January 30th. 2014 that may for change some religious opinion Ohio Revised Code 723.04 and 723.05 change a change in the name, vacating or narrowing streets, avenues, or alleys within a municipal corporation. Prior to this change in law, the original ordinance or a certified copy thereof could be recorded in the office of the county recorder. The new law renders the recording of the ordinance or certified copy thereof mandatory. The recording fee for the service is $28 for the first two pages and $8 for each additional page attached. So uh, we also think that when you submit an ordinance for recording that you include a drawing that displays the lot numbers that the street, avenue, or alley, border, or are adjacent to. So that's the way we know I have to do it from now on. Thank you. Uh, Ralph, did you have a chance to talk with the fire department? No, yeah, it's cold morning. I've only talked to them, and I haven't talked to them to the point where they can make a decision until Monday night when they have the record. Okay. Dave, I'm sure that's the reason you're here. I don't know. I was going to want to answer from us quickly. I forgot the time frame on this. But at the end of September is when the grant is uh, considered. I know, but you well, if we can't do it, you want to give a move on to someone else. I, I, I know that. Well, I don't really have anybody else lined up like I did you when, when somebody else decided they did not want it. So, you know, they, I'm. So we got a little time here. You've got a little bit of time, yes. We're trying. What we're trying to do is we're asking the uh, the, the chamber and, and, and CJ now the uh, campground and show some interest in that. And of course, we're waiting to hear back from the fire department. <coughs> so you know, hopefully we can uh, combine some funds to make this happen. Okay. And of course, everybody has to realize that this is you pay it up front and you wait for your fifty percent to come back to you, which I'm assuming is not a, a rapid response. So the, the, the last time it happened, we ended up getting it in less than 60 days. Well, that's pretty cool. 60 days. That's, that's better I thought. Yeah. 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 And we're looking at a maximum of $10,000. Is that correct, Dave? Correct. It, it's, it's a 50% reimbursement on whatever it is that you spend up to $10,000. So if you go for $20,000 and you spend that to put a tornado siren in, you will get $10,000 back. If you spend $25,000 to put a siren in, you will get $10,000 back. If you spend $15,000 for a tornado siren, you will get $7,500 back. It's 50% of the total cost up to $10,000. <clears> Hopefully we'll have some answers for you as soon as everybody can catch up with everyone at the meetings. So thank you. I just wanted to make sure that you had any questions that I could answer them for you. I should have been here at the last meeting. I forgot all about it to, to be able to let you guys know what the parameters are for it. So I wanted to make sure I got down here today to let you guys know, answer any questions. Any questions for David from everyone? <clears throat> are you looking at same type sirens? Big or small? Well, the sirens are the siren that they're looking at, and, and you get different ones. The one that Dave is recommending that is good for a mile radius. You'll hear it, but it's an outside. You're only hearing it in the house. If you're outside, the weather's coming. Everyone in town, a mile radius is going to cover pretty much the village. Okay. But location is going to be a key. You know, and there we had discussion last uh, time that you know Dave's recommendation would be if we could put this somewhere. Because the batteries are kind of expensive and they don't last a lot longer. That Greg Dave, you might want to elaborate on that. Right. The uh, um, from I've talked to several different EMA managers, and the problems that they see with tornado sirens is the uh, batteries and the charging system for the batteries. Uh, that is a consumable. There, you're going to have to replace those things every so often. And the the current pricing on them right now is about five hundred dollars for a battery. There are three of them that are in there, and it's about $750 for the charger, depending upon what it is you get. I mean, that, those prices will vary depending on the siren that you get. If you can find some place to put the siren that has 
24-7 automatic generation service, uh, you know, like the firehouse is set up like that. Uh, Gasper Township did the same thing. They put it at their firehouse. They have a generator there. They did not have to put any of the batteries or a charger in there because it was serviced 24-7 with electricity, period. So I would highly recommend going that route. Um, but it's, it's kind of going to be an expensive deal otherwise. And the time that it's going to be down if something does happen, it is going to be detrimental. And so if you have some place that has a generator, it will be 100% uptime unless, of course, something happens to the siren. But uh, the way I understand, they are very reliable. When we did that study years ago, they put in, they, the company came in and did the study from New Paris, set them up in the north end of town, out by the, you know, what's that little business that's out there now? It's got the, it used to be a truck stop here. Oh, and then it was Judy, Jones and Judy's for years. That was one of the spots. The other spot was at the firehouse, and the other spot was down the township building, mm -hmm. which only makes sense to us that it would be at the firehouse. Now, they were all one mile radius sirens, mm -hmm. which would reach out quite clear. So there's only a couple of spots really that, can, that that could happen, and one would be there, and the other would be up at our. Your radio tower behind the firehouse, would that be high enough to get it up to where it needs to be? Or, I mean, the horn's not that heavy, is it? And no, yeah, it's a very heavy. heavy. Yeah, you're, you're, you're going to need to have some sort of a light, light pole like light be able to put it on. Um, Gasper Township has gotten a grant from uh, Butler Rural Electric. Uh, they are going to donate the, uh, uh, the, the pole and the installation of the pole. So you might be able to find something like that. I know Dark Rural has uh, grants and stuff and grant money that you might be able to get a hold of to be able to do something like that and help you with reduce the amount of the cost. But it, yes, they are rather heavy and I don't think a radio antenna uh, tower will be strong enough to hold something like that. Yeah, I don't know what they would. So. It, there, it may be in the specifications on there. Yeah. If, if not, you can go online and I'm sure there's more information on that. All right, well, since we hear back from some of these other folks, we'll, uh, we'll let you know what we found out. Okay. Thank you. Yep, sure thing. <clears throat> okay. I don't think I asked what you might mention this about. Maybe we can't go on that and have back the day after got back with this on the usage of the poll. Uh, okay, well, we, we, we've been talking about a generator got some bids back in the generator. I've been in contact with EPNL about, in fact, I talked with the guy today. He's supposed to get back with me. The pole right behind our house instead of digging up and burying the cable, which will be more expensive to us. If they'll let us use their pole and come over with an overhead mask or on the back end, if we so choose to go that wide up route to put this building up to the generator over there. So hopefully the guys that will be back in contact with me in a couple days on that. So I really don't see why they're not going to let us just tied the pole. I mean, it's no big deal, but we'll see what they say. So. Location-wise on this tornado siren, though, would be better served at the firehouse area versus being here if we had the generator, even if the generator was sit, sit here now? I don't know. Well, Dave, do you have an opinion? They well, didn't. my opinion would be it would probably be better served closer here just simply because of the campground. If people are in a motor home or a uh, camper or actually in a tent, they're more likely to hear it more so than if they were in a actual built home. Uh, so because the tornado siren is designated more as an outdoor warning siren, uh, not necessarily that you're going to hear it inside. Some people will as close as what they are, but a lot of them won't. But having it close to the, uh, uh, the, the, the lake like that, with all the camping spots there is probably a little bit better, but I really think they would be able to still hear it if it was located at the firehouse. Okay. It, it, would, it, it, would be, it would be better better at the firehouse. Yes. Down here we're in a hole. Even with, when you have this one going off, you can't hear it very well if you go up on the other side of town. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. we're down in a hole here. It's always been a problem. And when, I don't see doing away with the one that we've already got. I would want to keep this one too, but also add to the, put the new one in of the firehouse. I think that would make sense. Because mm -hmm. then it would cover just this area, just like what you're talking about, right around here, here, and up there. I think it would cover the rest of the community. It only makes sense to me. 
why do away with the one we've already got? And it was That's like, you know, when we were kids and it was up at the firehouse, you could hear that baby. Living in the house. Oh, yeah, in the house. It was loud. Yeah. I can't hear it at all where I'm at. That's what this I mean. Because you're in a hole down here. Yeah. I, I agree with that. There's several communities that have more than two. Yeah. Well, Eden's got eight. I believe eight. Don't they choose yeah. five? I need eight. I thought they had eight. But, uh, you know, so. <laughs> one was a cheap, like $2,700, hooked this one up to an electronic old where she said, oh, is that what the number was a few years ago? You check on it somewhere in that neighborhood. Yeah. So if you kept it, you had this one, and you <coughs> make this one aware, but it didn't have to be manually sit off. It can be done. It's just, so, so we can convert this, but it would be operated the same. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think it was around $2,700, was it cheap? I don't remember all the hands of this. Somewhere in that neighborhood, I think. But the capability is there to be able to do it. Yeah, all we need, well, we need to do right. that is get us hooked into the generator. I got you. So yeah. we have the backup right. power. But what I didn't want to do was go to all the trouble and take this before the fire department use their facility and so forth and so on. And then a few weeks later, a few months later, we create our own system here with our own uh, generator. And then they'll say, well, why would you do that when you're going to have your own generator? You know? Well, we can still, we can still yeah. keep the one we've got. And just add this one. Yeah. Which makes it better for the community anyway. Right. You know? And then, then having to have this wired into the radio, like we wanted to do, make them both so that they can be set off county-wide, period. And we wouldn't even have to mess with them, right? Right. Which makes sense to me. Well, it does, but, you know, for safety factors. When well, they well, ask me, why are we, why are you why coming to us when you're going to be well, doing the same thing in your own house, you know? I need to be able to answer that question. To add, add another side to the community so that we can be covered. Okay, uh, next order of business is uh, Jamin's review. And uh, my recommendation to council is 75 cents for Eustace Jima. That is 75 from council and 75 from BPA for $1.50 total. I think she deserves more than that. Well, then it floors open suggestions. Well, go ahead. I, I look at $2. Yes, that's a proposal maker. She's been doing great. I don't she disagree. Yeah. She's running the place. <laughs> right, I give you my review, so now if you'd like to make that Yeah, I'd like to make a ahead. motion that Jamie gets a $2 raise. A dollar, total? Total. Dollar here, dollar BPA? Yes. Is there a second? I'll second that. Roll call. Neil. Yes. Mary Jane? Yes. Kathy? Yes. Bill? Yes. Brad? Yes. Would you like to make this retro act, act, retro back to this, her hiring date or as effective today? Effective today. I'll put that in the form of a motion. Second? I'll second that. Roll call, please. Neil? Yes. Bill? Yes. Brad? Yes. Mary Jane? Yes. yes. Kathy? Yes. All right. At this point, uh, we're going to, I need a motion to go into the executive session one more time to discuss uh, employees' policies, please. I move that we go into executive session to discuss employee policies. For a second. Second. Roll call, please. Mary Jane. Yes. Kathy. Yes. Ralph. Yes. Bill. Yes. Neil. Yes. Everyone. I need a motion to come out of executive session, please. So Is there a second? Roll call, please. Neil. Yes. Kathy. Yes. Ralph. Yes. Bill. Yes. Neil. Yes. Ralph. Yes. 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 Okay, there's been some discussion about insurance. Is there a motion on the floor for amendment of the last meeting? I move that the um, motion made by Mary Jane at the uh, special session be amended to read a the health reimbursement accounts will be capped for at $750 per employee only and $1,500 for employee and family up through December 31st, 2014. Is there a second on the motion? I second. Roll call, please. Mary Jane? Yes. Kathy? Yes. Neil? Yeah. Brad? Yes. Yes. And with that, 
Next meeting will be May 5th, 2014 at 7 o'clock. I need a motion to adjourn. So All in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you.